Welcome to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Great to have you. I'm sure this is going to be a compelling discussion. We're focusing on a topic that we believe is uh, related to the fact that we're currently talking about the International Year of Sustainable Tourism Development, but we're also going to look at the travel potential of Germany and how far we have come when it comes to sustainable travel destinations, status quo and lesson lessons learned. That's the name of the presentation. But I think we should put a question mark behind the lessons learned because we want to talk to practitioners now and see whether really we've learned anything. And we base our discussion on the best practice guide on of the German Tourism Association, which was introduced last year here at ITB. And it's about time for some stock taking. How far have companies uh, uh, come? Is that really a reliable guide? Is it a benchmark, or is it just uh, something, uh, a document that you shelve or scrap? And we'll hear some about that in a moment. But before we do, we will have uh, Dirk Dunkelberg, who will uh, give us some input first. He's the Deputy Chief Executive of the German Tourism Association. Thank you very much, Mr. Wurm, for the kind word of introduction. A year ago today, I was in this room just uh, in front of a, a bold audience as um, this one here today. And uh, I'm really glad that despite the uh, airport strike, we have uh, many people in this room. And exactly one year after we published our best practice guide for sustainable travel destinations, I now have the pleasure to look back and see how far we've come and what does actually happen in real life and how people work with this best practice guide. Do they use it at all? And if so, to what extent? Well, I should say this uh, best practice guide has been a very successful brochure. About 5,000 copies, uh, uh, hard copies, uh, have been published. The guidelines also available on the internet. It has been a joint project by the Federal Ministry of the Environment and uh, the Federal Office for Nature Preservation. Now, currently, we are uh, planning to come up with a second edition and uh, will print it both in German and English. Why English? Well, the uh, best uh, practice guide made its way to the UNWTO, the World Tourism Organization, and we take great pride in that, which is, has been uh, a great honor to us. Now, also, Switzerland uh, has decided to uh, offer that best practice guide also to their travel destination. And you would uh, realize that Switzerland is about quality. And we always look to Switzerland in terms of what they do. Now Switzerland is looking to Germany, which is something we are very happy about. In other words, this pra best practice guide has created a product, a product for potential sustainable travel destinations who want to develop a product. OK. I'm not going to uh, read uh, through all the findings of the survey. We also uh, did uh, a survey with our recipients of that, the best practice guy, and uh, my colleagues will um, give you some explanation as we go along. So thank you very much uh, for showing up in such large numbers. This is a joint event by the German Tourism Association and the Federal Ministry. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'd like to welcome you also on behalf of my colleague Martin Balaj. We represent BTU, which is a tourism and regional consultancy. Now, we look at uh, our survey results. Now, the survey, as we just heard before, was looking at the users of the best practice guide. The best practice guide, as we heard just a moment ago, was uh, published a, a couple of years ago based on the uh, sustainable tourism region contest in Germany. The result of that best practice guide obviously uh, has uh, established quite uh, a standard for the industry, which I think uh, is a valid tool. Now we want to see how people are using it in real life. It has gone down really well. So how precisely are people using the best practice guide? We did an online survey for that with uh, nine closed and three open questions. 
with a total survey of 426 travel destinations in January and February this year in this country. We uh, received 123 respondent, uh, responses, uh, out of which about 50 percent accounted uh, for regional travel organizations, 25 percent city tourism organizations, and 20, another 20 percent local organizations. And we asked people questions like, how are you using that best practice guide? Has it been helpful for your region or city? What has it helped you to develop? What product? And how do you think you could use it even uh, further on in the future? OK, so the first question we asked to uh, people do you know, are you aware of the best practice guide? Uh, because it has been sent out uh, by the uh, Tourism Association. And indeed, 75% of respondents are saying, yes, we are aware of that document. One quarter, 25%, are not aware of it. But uh, still, 75% is pretty positive. Now, the next qu question we asked, what do you use that guide for? How do you use it in your everyday uh, work environment. Now, an important aspect um, that we're going to come back uh, to in the discussion is that the majority just takes note of that best practice guide. So basically, that's what they did. They do. They look at it. They read it. That's it. Now, when you look about look at how that will then be used elsewhere. This uh, best practice guide is not only read by one organization, they pass it on to their partners, so they're spreading the word. And that's a positive thing. Destinations themselves take strategic decisions in terms of um, developing a sustainability profile for themselves. So, um, And that's very much um, in line with uh, other sustainability strategies that had earlier been developed in those regions. Then we asked another question, how helpful is that uh, publication for you? And 84 percent are saying it's very helpful, now, out of those who know it, of course. And there you see it's used as a tool that allows organizations to identify action items or fields of action so they realize, OK, if I want to develop a sustainability product, I know what areas I can look at. So selection of profile. It helps them, helps them because we offer a list of criteria in that best practice guide. And something that people also appreciate, that the publication at the end in those last couple of pages, for those of you who have seen it know what I'm talking about, the checklists. They have checklists that allow you to tick off some criteria that may be you have already met in your region. Whenever you do a survey, you also want to make sure what's the general, what's your general take on sustainability, quite irrespective of the best practice guide or whether you have read it or not. So we ask people, have you ever dealt with uh, sustainability as a trend? And that's an interesting result, 50-50 almost. So half of respondents, i.e. German travel destinations, are saying, yes, we have more or less intensely dealt with it, which is positive. But it also conversely means that the remaining half, the other 50 percent, have never dealt with it. Now, is that something you could justify to not at all, to reject uh, sustainability as a growth perspective? So we try to drill a little deeper to see what are the areas that people do most of their work in. Well, just four of them here. Not just the conventional three pillars of sustainability, but also we included an institutional part, i.e. management. Management is also uh, about sustainability. And uh, the destination that we talk to are uh, focusing most of their uh, work on management issues related to sustainability, followed by um, by the environment, uh, the economy, and social, social affairs. 43 percent, in fact, are saying that, yes, sustainability is important for us in terms of the social dimension. But even that wasn't enough for us. And we uh, uh, asked an open question. What is it that you believe is sustainable in your work? And we tried to cluster that, all those many names and uh, terms and concepts here. And obviously, I cannot uh, read them out 
certainly not all of them. But what is the uh, traditional work profile? Now, many people prefer then to work with the stakeholders, create uh, awareness raising campaigns, they set up networks, networks that allow people to work on sustainability jointly. Green Meetings has been uh, nominated as one of the key projects. Sustainable meetings and sustainable uh, conference organization um, have been uh, conducted. And obviously, not least of all, ecology, environmental protection, resource management, water, waste, energy, these have often been named as uh, the preferred answers to that survey. Now, also what we wanted to know, why do you think sustainability is largely ignored by some? And those answers won't come as a surprise, I'm sure. And that's because people working in destination, destination management have to deal with so many other things, uh, are sometimes overstretched with the work they need to do. They simply have no time for sustainability. Destinations often do not have human or financial resources to deal with sustainable programs, they claim, right? So uh, these two arguments are actually um, dominating. Others are saying, you know, uh, lower percentages that they're not aware of sustainability and don't know what it means. But a central pretext, if you will, is no, we have no time, we have no money to deal with sustainability, full stop. And therefore, then, the final question we address to the destinations, well, what would you need? What would it take in addition to the best practice guide in order to do more and to put uh, uh, theory into, pra into practice? Well, and then the first answer was, well, we need financial support. We not need incentives. We need government support to get going. Then, uh, coming in second, they said we need education and qualification standards uh, on sustainable tourism, on sustainable travel. Now, that's a discussion we had earlier when we talked to travel agencies. Also, they required uh, single education standards and accreditation standards also for sustainable travel. And we need a clear assignment of tasks to a tourism organization. Why? Because many tourism boards consider themselves to be marketing driven and they don't feel that sustainability is on their plate. But I think we need to get it right. They all, in fact, need to get it right. Also, what is required is a best practice guide that is uh, nationwide, if you will, or is accredited by some government body. Because our best practice guide is just, well, as the name suggests, a guideline, but it's not mandatory or binding. People also require instruments or tools to measure sustainability indicators in the travel industry. So that's interesting. And that now, I think, takes us right into your panel discussion. So with that, uh, that was a brief summary of our survey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Brian and Mr. Badash. Because this is going to be um, the food for thought for our panelists here on stage. But let us involve you guys as well, because we can do an audience participation show, indeed. So here's a question for all of you. Before we start with our panelists here on stage, let's take this question, Sam. Please make sure you answer it. You'll have noticed that you have little uh, voting uh, machines on your chairs. So here's your question, and please choose answer one, two, or three. Only one out of the three numbers you can press. So obviously it's multiple. Uh, it's not multiple choice. It's single choice out of a, a range of three. So please wait until I give you the go ahead. Otherwise our computers will crash. Who is responsible for the implementation of a sustainable tourism now? Who should be responsible? Either number one, the national or the local government, so the state. Should it be a tourism organization, number two? Or is it just the service providers who are in charge to turn sustainability into reality? So who do you think should be in charge? Can we have your vote, please? OK. 
Okay, can I see the envelope? Ah, oh, sorry, kidding. Let's see. Oh, there we are, the service providers, companies themselves, 38. Well, if you look at it, it's uh, relatively balanced, isn't it? So I could imagine that uh, there's uh, not a really, not a really straight uh, direction here. Now let's see. We have uh, the following panelists: uh, Stephanie Fall, who f uh, working in the Federal Ministry for Environment, Nature, Conversation, and she's also a desk officer for um, uh, sustainability issues. So thank you very much for being here and welcome. Then we have a young lady who knows exactly what it means to uh, work sustainably, but she didn't need the best practice guide, and we'll find out in a moment. She's Barbara Kenner, owner of uh, the organic hotel and guest house Kenner's Landlust from Lower Saxony. And then to the very uh, right of you, we have uh, Armin Delnitz, uh, executive president of Stuttgart Marketing and vice president of the German Tourism Association, DTV. And he's also in charge of um, in charge of uh, managing the tourism board in a larger city, Stuttgart. So welcome to you as well. Then we have Dr. Andreas uh, Zimmer, head of uh, cluster management tourism from TMB, the Tourism Marketing Board of Brandenburg. Now, cluster management was about uh, analyzing where we are and how things are going to develop from there. And he also was one of the spiritual fathers of the best practice guide. And he jointly with colleagues developed the list of criteria for sustainability in tourism. Welcome. And to my left, Max Trippers, uh, Managing Director of Ostsee Ford Schley, which is a regional and city marketing organization. You're a specialist, in other words. And you are the one who uh, were a pioneer of uh, sustainability travel. So you uh, were here last year when the best practice guide was introduced. Can we start with you then, Mr. Trippers? Uh, is your sustainable, has your sustainable conscience been uh, pricked here by reading the best practice guide? Because it's quite a tall, or, tall order if you develop the sustainability product. Well, for those of you who don't know me, um, I come from the northeast of Slesvig Holstein, close to the Danish border, up by the Baltic Sea. Now, our region in those past four years has be uh, developed as what we call a region of deceleration, so where people can take a, an easygoing and relaxed uh, holiday. Sustainability in the past was what we called a cross-sectional responsibility. We worked on it, but didn't really uh, go full. Didn't really go full uh, power ahead with it. We realized over the past years, though, that sustainability actually fits nicely with our tourism product. I must say, I was a little disappointed uh, when I first read that best practice guide and was at this and, and attended here this forum, and um, I've then so, uh, seen the, that what's included in the checklists, uh, the recommendations, and the yes and no decisions are really helpful and useful, and we use them. And there are some places actually that we could put a, quite a few tick marks on things that were already uh, in good shape. There have been some other things that we thought, yes, there is potential for us to go forward. So that has been useful. As a working instrument, um, that was uh, not bad at all. We left some places blank because we thought, you know, this is not relevant for us and we don't obviously don't need to do anything that allowed, to, allowed us to cluster our sustainability products in the region. Well, here's the best practice guide, the, uh, the masterpiece, as we've heard before. At page 76, by the way, is that checklist that we just talked about. It's very straightforward, it's very transparent, and it allows you also some, to take a decision on where you want to go, what algorithms, if you, uh, in a way, are available. It's foolproof almost. What was the feedback you got from, uh, from the companies, from the different operators, the service providers that you talked to? 
Well, we did a self-rating first. We tried to rate our uh, suppliers with whom we worked. And then, together with uh, the Chamber of Industry and Commerce, we organized a workshop in Schleswig and introduced our results. Um, and really, what we call literally dropped our pants and told people, look, here's what we do. This is something we are not good at. So, you know, owning up on our own deficiencies, we did that in that workshop uh, to pick a number of uh, action items. Like, for instance, regional products. We have done something on uh, regional products and produce, but there's more to go forward. Mobility is another priority. We're not in good shape yet. So I wouldn't tell our, our, our travelers our travelers to come to our place without a car. So we depend on uh, uh, mobility there. And we realize that no quick successes will be possible uh, in the mobility area. And uh, procurement. Um, procurement is another issue. So what is the produce that our um, operators like hotels, restaurants, uh, or holiday parks need um, in order to um, work properly and work sustainably? So we're currently looking at that sustainable sourcing in the area. Ideally, we need to bring everyone on board and then centrally procure sustainable products from there. But also, we want to lead by example. We have appointed a sustainability officer in our team. We have our own sustainability guide in terms of what sustainability means for our own operations. Now, as a tourism board, you always uh, print a lot of materials on paper. The question is, what paper do we print it on? Is it organic or at least sustainable, uh, recycl uh, recyclable paper, etc.? Now, all of that um, uh, certainly is possible. You can procure differently. You can find the cheapest uh, vendor over the internet, but you could easily find vendors that work in your regions. And uh, this is actually quite a useful tool. And that uh, guideline, by the way, also is available online. OK. Now, when we talk to um, the corporate structure or the structure of different companies, Mr. Zimmer, there are differences there. But I could imagine to bring people on board uh, you know, on board the sustainability ship is certainly not an easy thing to do. At least individual players find it hard to do it. Let me follow up on that. Sustainable travel, sustainable tourism is perhaps still in its infancy. We haven't made as much progress as we would have liked. And I'm talking about Brandenburg, the state of Brandenburg here. Now, some people seem to pretend that sustainability is an add-on. Right, you need a chief sustainability officer. You need to do your everyday business plus do some sustainability because otherwise uh, the whole picture is not complete. And this is wrong. That's a fallacy. We need to understand that we cannot not deal with uh, sustainability. It's part and parcel of uh, our work in the future or in the present, I should say. So. How do we deal with it strategically? Identify issues that I need to tackle. A tourism board can only raise people's awareness to educate them, to motivate them. Now, we're talking in Brandenburg about an industry of 10,000 organizations, players, stakeholders. Now, try and motivate every one of them. It's, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty tough job. So therefore, my question is, are we fast enough doing that? Probably not. You earlier said there are uh, bright and dark days. In a dark day, you would ask yourselves, who cares about sustainability anyway? Why are we doing that? There's, if the day is a bit brighter and you have some uh, vendors coming in or partners who are happy to report on their good track record, things look differently. What would be your uh, take on it, on the situation today. Is it a bright or dark day today? No, today's a bright day because uh, I talked to a colleague who uh, does an awful lot of work in terms of employee motivation, motivational uh, speeches, etc. And that can be really useful. Interesting. What's interesting is that uh, it's mostly those future-focused companies that are not only interested in labels and certificates um, and uh, greenwashing, but they want to embrace this trend um, in all the different dimensions, along all the different dimensions of sustainability also. Now, Dr. Farr, we just talked about certifications and labels. The minister 
for Development just criticized that less than 5% of uh, tourism businesses have been certified. In other words, you know, they are the only ones that have a green conscience, the other ones don't. Or is that just a question of um, lack of certificates? Do people need to be certified? No, no, I don't think you need to be certified because that best practice guide we refer to shows you you can do good stuff without bearing a label or bearing a certificate. The certificate is just externally oriented. You're showing to the rest of the world what you're doing. Now, I often hear that certification when you sell a product uh, is not so useful because it's not what customers want and customers don't ask about, uh, about that. I'm not sure if that's true, though. But let's approach that from the other end. Certificates, labels help you to uh, track and monitor your own processes. You, uh, it helps you to be more resource efficient, especially if it's an eco-label. And then at the end of the day, it will have a positive cost impact. So normally your cost should go down rather than up. And this also means the product that you're selling is getting better and better if it's certified, is it, if it is accredited, because you work more efficiently. Makes you more attractive for your final customer without necessarily uh, you know, owning a certificate and displaying it 24-7 uh, to all your potential customers. It's very useful for you, for your own organization. It's not only um, a hallmark or something or a, a, a showcasing element. So those organizations that have uh, certified um, their own operations uh, helps them to uncover quite some good potential. Now, Ms. Kenner, you own quite a number of certificates, um, but you are not following the best practice guide because you are operating an organic hotel. What do you think about those labels uh, in the quality seals? Could they be helpful in terms of transparency? Well, I'm involved in this as well. I, I'm one of the organic dinosaurs, uh, as it were, so thank you very much for introducing me as a young uh, lady. It was in '86 that I started doing organic farming, and we always uh, certified ourselves mutually. We checked what the others did. And one of us uh, at one point said, look, Willem, you had liquid fertilizer that you used on the field. And he said, oh, well, just a little bit. And then we thought, well, and now? What do we do now? A certifi uh, certification for liquid manna? Yes, exactly. So we introduced a certification for organic farming. A lot of things happen at other levels. I suppose that there are too many different certifications involving various costs, new approaches all the time. There are too many of them, I think. It would be better to summarize them and say, OK, let's have a round table talk and let's see what we need for sustainability. I've got a certificate for biological um, foods, uh, for a bioreservoir. Um, I'm climate neutral in my certification. There are more, <clears throat> um, more characteristics, so it is quite a lot. And um, topics are really important to us because sustainability is not an end in itself. No, it's about the love for nature, for the planet Earth. And this is why I think that certificates are just a means to make some headway. And at the beginning, you asked a question, who's responsible? And I wouldn't want to pick one of the three. It is the three of them together, <clears throat> all together. If only one person does it alone, it's not sufficient. Well, uh, no, you're right about the question. Uh, it is important that uh, everybody acts in concert of course. Now we're talking about the rural region, if I can put it like this, the Elbtal um, region. But you're responsible for the city of Stuttgart, for the awareness in bigger cities. Is it even more difficult there? I think it is as difficult there as elsewhere. The entire topic of sustainability can be handled quite well if you talk about your own company, because in your own company or organization, you've got the possibility to uh, implement things and you know about uh, your awareness why you do it. But once you've done it, and this is usually the first step, that you should uh, put the own uh, company in a good uh, position. And then you start with catering business and hotel. Then it really will be a huge task. And when we started two years ago, we thought, well, we are, we're a little bit naive. This is just some project. And we thought it will be sufficient um, to have someone who dedicates 10 or 20% of his or her time to sustainability. 
And then uh, the employee, my employee, after a few days, she approached me and said, look, if you don't help me, I won't manage by myself. And I said, no, no, I'm fully with you. I support you. No problem. But then she contacted me every week and I was a bit uh, irritated. And she said, no, you don't support me at all. I can feel it. I can tell. So. I was a difficult person to uh, get convinced, but she managed to get me on my nerves so much that I said, OK, it's ne it needs to be something that we need to do together, that the boss needs to get involved in. But then uh, we actually had to invest a great deal of resources into sustainability. It was not just a minor project. And this is why it's so important what we said earlier, that some people are a bit reserved when it comes to reserves. This is something that you must not underestimate. because. You mustn't wait until someone maybe is there to finance these resources, because in case of doubt, this will not be possible. No, you simply have to um, do it and commit uh, resources and staff to it. And I think it is worthwhile. Just one example, because very often this is reduced to organic things. But as a boss, you always think you're the best. Anyhow. <clears throat> Everybody who is a leading manager think that they do everything right, etc. So um, it is already a first step to make a survey amongst uh, staff, and then you realize that some people disagree. And this is uh, a process, and it's something that you can't just implement very quickly. And once you've gone through all this, you enter into kind of a dynamic world, and all of a sudden it starts getting fun because you realize that sustainability, as was said earlier, um, affects the entire company, and you can't stop it. All of a sudden, the ball has started rolling. And you say A, B, C, and then you continue along these lines. And this is the path we've uh, taken. But you have to say this with full respect. This is not something that you do just in an aside. No, you have to do it as a full-time job. But you have to get started. And if you don't start with sustainability, then you will be in a competitive disadvantage. Because um, sustainability is something that well, maybe nowadays you can say I can still wait, but in five years' time, it will be a competitive disadvantage if you're not involved in sustainability. Question to all of you. Is it a criterion has to sell things? Um, Mrs. Kenner, I suppose, you do have customers who ask about it, are you sustainable? I think this holds true for all of you. What kind of food stuff do you have? What kind of um, services do you have? I, I still have the microphone, so I would like to um, be the first one to answer, and then I'll hand the floor to you. Well, the first segment in city tourism, where this is a competitive issue, is the field of convention, that is, conferences, events, etc. Quite clearly so. We uh, always get customers who ask about it. Um, we want to have sustainable locations, sustainable hotels, uh, conferences, centres. This involves the entire infrastructure, the airport, the exhibition grounds, etc. And against the backdrop of global competition we're in, uh, we have to compete uh, with other global destinations. And then if you have to say we don't have any sustainable services, then in some cases, some customers say, OK, then we will go elsewhere because uh, we don't want this. Mrs. Kenner. You need to be an organic freak so as to go to your place? No, definitely not. We want to um, also um, tell people who usually don't have organic things they uh, buy that they come to us because we've got a nice forest, children can go there, get fresh air, and we do uh, tours uh, with wolves. My uh, husband is a wolf advisor. We've got a pack of wolves quite close to our house. You can't uh, just uh, pet them, of course, but the wolves are quite close to our house. So we offer tours so as to teach people how they can deal with these animals, how, what it is like to live um, next to walls. What does it mean if they roam about in the streets in the night? And uh, well, these things are not directly linked to sustainability, but indirectly they are. And maybe we can attract people who are not uh, organic or green freaks. We do have a lot of uh, people and customers who are sustainable themselves because we are really a sustainable organization. And if my favorite food is just some meat with uh, chips, then you won't be happy in our place. Maybe you sp spaghetti with some meat meat sauce. What about some delicious lasagna? OK, then we maybe we can uh, start talking about food. Uh, what about you? As far as um, demand, uh, 
of sustainability is concerned. Yeah, I fully agree with um, the gentleman and the lady. There are people who ask about sustainability. We do have conference hotels um, which are well positioned in the field of sustainability. Some private uh, hotel might say approximately 25 percent of our conference customers uh, want to um, hold their conferences in our hotels because we have a sustainability certification. This is quite a lot. 25 percent in terms of turnover is quite a lot, but this is not the general situation. There are also others asking about in-house CR, CSR activities. Apart from that, um, other things around sustainability are important. Regional products, for instance, this is in high demand, or flavor, natural landscapes, etc. You don't enter into Google um, sustainable tourism in Brandenburg weekend, where can I go to? This is obvious. But uh, customers enjoy the contents, and this is what we sell. We do have a discussion about sustainability marketing, sustainability in processes. We kind of mix it up sometimes. And I think as far as individual traveling is concerned, content is important. The target group um, uh, comes from Berlin, for instance. In our case, I would like to talk about marketing as well in a little while. But first, a question to Mrs. Fahn. We do have the guideline that we mentioned, but maybe uh, this should be enhanced uh, by, say, workshops or uh, some kind of promotion because some people say it is just too expensive. Well, first of all, we try to be a role model via tools such as the guidelines we refer to. So we provide tools so as to um, hire experts um, that provide a structure. We don't do it together. We've got competent partners such as the DTV, the German Tourism Association, and others, and they do the academic background uh, and provide uh, this. Um, here, this conference today is kind of uh, an evaluation or monitoring to see whether um, our funding also provides positive effects. As far as sustainable operations are concerned, you need to change your operations, of course, and this is not our as straightforward as you might think, because we've got competitive uh, law that is the acts in terms of competition. So we can't support just individual companies, and others we won't. Um, but if we were to be told uh, certain things about individual measures, I myself don't know the detail, but I know uh, that there are uh, European funds as well for promoting sustainability. So if there are any contradictions or problems, then we get people who tell us, well, look, maybe you can see the other aspects as well. Apart from that, we can also give information on existing uh, programs in terms of promotion for climate protection. Uh, KFW uh, provides funds for energy efficiency measures, uh, measures for instance, uh, Dioga uh, hotels, etc. Um, have programs uh, about how to um, design hotels and restaurants in a more energy efficient way. This is supported by my colleagues as well. So you can get a great deal of information. You can get information about how to apply for funds for instance. From my point of view, this is quite a lot already because the local situations are different. It really depends. Um, so there is not the one promotion program, but we do provide help in a systematic manner so as to give you certain ideas, information, and we don't expect people to implement the guidelines within two years' time. It's just um, kind of a recommendation that you can use for yourself, and maybe we, you start with easier points. And I also think uh, that once you've um, involved people, you kind of have kick-started a process uh, because they can see for themselves that things are getting better. And this is what happened one year ago. You said that you were really overwhelmed by the feedback uh, after this guideline. 500 addresses were contacted, sorry, 5,000 5, copies. They are they have all been sent to the various people. Now you've taken stock uh, after one year time. Do you still say, wow, or are you surprised by some of the results? Well, uh, if I take into account the feedback of other activities, I still have to say, wow, because 75% of awareness of these guidelines is quite a lot. It's 84% of people who think that this is something positive, and this is quite an achievement. 
uh, I talked to various people and I realized that the guidelines are well known and people also use it. So this is quite a good result already. And if there are problems, uh, please feel free to tell us because we would like to develop this further and we want to make sure that the guidelines are used even more often. Um, this is what uh, you did. Um, you used the guidelines. Is there anything, Mr. Triphouse, where you'd said, OK, this uh, should have been better, you could improve this? Generally speaking, and you also asked the question about who's responsible, the state, the government, uh, the individual service providers, the regions, who is it? I think at state level, um, the government could provide the general conditions. From my point of view, you can't do it in a top-down approach and define everything for uh, Germany as a whole. Sustainability depends on the regions. We've got uh, other issues at the Baltic Sea compared to the North Sea um, further south. There are other things that are important, so I think you need regional strategies, and then you can sum uh, up the individual regions. So sustainability can be defined in different ways, and this is also reflected in the guidelines. Sometimes <clears throat> we see, okay, this is one point in the guidelines that is just not relevant for us. I've just mentioned it earlier. Regarding your uh, hotels or companies, you've been able to make them aware and be interested in sustainability. Is it also a competition? People try to compete and be uh, better than the Jonases, that is, be faster, higher, etc., be better? Have you realized that this happened? Well, we are in the phase of motivating companies and hotels and making them aware of things. Uh, some are, are really in a very good position. We uh, organized workshops. Most of the time, we've discussed economic aspects. We've got um, companies which are role models. They've got um, a high demand of customers, and what we can communicate usually is, look at this, this is a sustainable uh, customer um, uh, or partner of ours, and they do it because they make a profit. Uh, when we find arguments, it's not only about social things. You can um, uh, look at social things once you uh, have earned money. And this is how you can motivate people by showing them that there are uh, role models in the region. Um, they can see, OK, there's a restaurant where people go to. So there is one. Um, partner in Schleswig, close to Schleswig, and they have uh, opened m uh, many restaurants there, and now they've got four hotels, and they're always fully booked, and others ask themselves why. And supposedly he doesn't do it because he says, um, I'm more sustainable than the others. It's just uh, economically interesting, of course. But Mr. Zimmer, what is your experience? What about the individual regions, the individual hotels? Do they compete with one another? With one another? As far as sustainability is concerned, uh, well, competing, you're asking about competition. There is competition regarding products, but not regarding the issue of sustainability, because this is an approach. Uh, and um, maybe you can uh, reach the objective and say, I'm more sustainable than you are. But people are fully aware of that, I think. I think there are not that many uh, players so that we can say this is competition. And I suppose that sustainable tourism will look differently. We've got the Uckermark region, for instance, and we've got um, a fertile competition there. And they want to focus on climate, uh, friend, a climate friendly approach. Other regions would do something else. So it really depends. It depends on the hotels, the general conditions, the regions. So you were asking about higher, faster, further. Well, um, I don't think we have this kind of competition. So you can't really do marketing that way. So everybody needs to develop this themselves. As I said, it is a competitive advantage. And if I want to uh, use this competitive advantage, I need to communicate it. So I um, include this in my marketing strategy. But we know um, that the convention area is important. We know that there are many um, 
organizers um, who've included this in their statutes. They never go to a location to organize a conference where there's no sustainability at all. The problem is that these people, um, they get their information uh, elsewhere. They don't contact us. So if I don't um, prove that I've got sustainable services on offer, that I'm not even included in the relevant uh, database of these people. So gradually, this is going to change. People who do not provide uh, sustainable services everywhere will not even be contacted by potential customers. And um, then I think um, this is going to change further. This is why we need to provide evidence that we um, really focus on sustainability. But we as a destination um, need our partners, our service providers. And this is a huge task, of course. They need to be willing to um, use this approach together with us. And uh, I said that you need uh, strength and uh, resources. You need to be in touch with everybody. You can just not send off a circular or an email to uh, some people, and then you're well known. I have to say this quite clearly. And I suppose that a lot of people in the audience feel the same. If you go somewhere and uh, people start talking about sustainability, well, this is a bit wishy-washy. It's not a clear definition. It's like digitization. Everybody does digitization. Nobody dares to say that he or she doesn't do digitization. But ask about what it means exactly. So everybody does sustainability. Nobody dares to be on stage and say, no, I'm not interested and I don't do sustainability. But to do it seriously and to also uh, do it in such a way that it will prov provide a competitive advantage, this is the challenge here. <clears throat> Schleswig-Holstein, uh, Lower Saxony, Brandenburg. There are so many federal states and regions we communicate with. Um, they've got rural areas. Agriculture is important. You come from the federal state of Baden-Württemberg. There are many rural areas there as well. Now, the city of Hamburg. As far as sustainability is concerned, uh, Hamburg is a role model, a pioneer as well. What about a city of Hamburg? Is it more complicated for a city, or what are the right approaches um, of Hamburg compared to, say, Frankfurt? I don't think that there are any differences and that you can say um, that city is doing better or we all have the same conditions where um, we also have an in-depth exchange between the cities. And I can't really say that the starting points would be different ones for the individual cities. Mr. Kenner, you are very familiar with the topic of sustainability, of course, and you also uh, looked into the brochure before our panel discussion. Um, what uh, do you, who have got a great deal of experience in the field of sustainability, what do you think about the guidelines? Um, what are the mistakes? Are there any? Or maybe you have also used some of the recommendations? No, I think it's really brilliant that uh, this brochure exists at all. I think it is very well structured. And I can understand the comments on checklists that you can use. And I think the right subjects have been broached in the brochure as well. I don't have a hotel because, uh, well, I'm a hotel owner as such. No, I come from uh, close to Gaul even, so I'm a missionary in terms of sustainability. I've got a lot of colleagues who ask me, how do you do it? And I think part of sustainability uh, also means cooperation. It's not always about competition. We uh, also cooperate with the organic hotels, for instance. And a lot of uh, hotels um, and colleagues um, from hotels who come there, they <clears throat> kind of uh, get in surreptitiously and they... Um, um, look into what we do, spies? I mean, no, not really. If we are able to develop something, we should do it. And if there's someone without ideas, maybe these people should look around themselves. Maybe there's something better. N doesn't mean that mm, this pe person is uh, stupid, but just to get some inspiration elsewhere. And I think this aspect of cooperation with colleagues, this should be supported. I think mutual um, marketing is possible through biosphere partners. There's a private association, for instance. And this is kind of contagious. There are colleagues who really have no idea whatsoever. And they say, we need to do marketing. 
but we only have plastic furniture. We don't know what to do at all. And then they start doing different food, cooking different food, and then they do it bit by bit. There are some people who uh, went to see me three years ago for the first time. They had no clue about sustainability. And nowadays they tell me, look, my insights are new and yours are 16 years ago. So I, uh, I'm in the know now. Uh, well, a six-year model, this is something great. It's about materials. Mm, uh, they shouldn't be health hazardous, of course. Um, natural paint that you can use, uh, wood as a material is great. But people with allergies sometimes need metal furniture, so it's difficult to tell. So this is quite a complex issue, we realize. We've got uh, 10 minutes left. Let us talk about perspective. Mr. Delnitz, what about you? What will you do in the future? You started... Um, approaching this and uh, doing this task. Mr. Triphaus told us as well, what about you? What will you do next? Well, I said it. We started um, focusing on sustainability and we will continue uh, along these lines. This is really vital uh, when it comes to enhancing the destinations. It's one of our corporate goals and thus a strategic goal for the further development of the regions. And we <clears throat> manage to get good partners and they in turn make sure that this um, is uh, being ex is accepted in the regions as well. We've got partner organizations and companies uh, working together with us. And this uh, creates a dynamic uh, development. So I can only recommend all people who are still hesitant maybe the first couple of years are really difficult, and <clears throat> this is the time when you will also um, suffer set setbacks. But then, uh, one of all of a sudden, you will realize that the horse is uh, running, if I can put it like this. That is, you've got a fast development, and this is uh, the situation we're in at the moment. What about you, Mr. Zimmer? What will you do next? You said that there are the first efforts to bring everybody together around uh, a round table to create new perspectives together. This is the main task, do you think so? We read the guidelines, had a look at the content. And there's the cross-sectional goal of sustainability uh, included, of course. But if you read the concepts very clearly, um, there's sustainability involved in all the objectives without even using the term. And at the moment, we um, see what the companies, the multipliers, the regions do. We try to make them convinced of this. And I don't know whether I can say it uh, publicly, but we will do sustainable tourism in the future, definitely. Well, <clears throat> sustainability is not supposed to be a, a, a bad word or an explosive or anything. No, quite on the contrary, it, sh it shall have help. It, it is a buzzword, of course, that you don't want to use. Well, we simply didn't use it. Well, and I think um, definitely we're quite ambitious. If you ask me in five years' time whether we were successful, I will be able to tell you because, as you've said, this is not something that you do within a very short period of time. It's about uh, general conditions, about um, strategic development, marketing, et cetera, to see what the impact will be in the long term. So these are long-term perspectives. What about uh, your region, Mr. Tripaus? You're actually in the fledgling stages, but you're already right in the center of it, if I can put it like this. What do you do for the future? What are your perspectives? Maybe you've reached a peak in uh, terms of sustainability in your uh, region already. No, it's definitely not a peak yet. We want to make sure that the process becomes more reliable. At the moment, we closely cooperate with the service providers. I don't want to talk about certificates, but uh, we don't really need certificates. But we need kind of an agreement with the service providers so that they endorse our understanding of sustainability. And we will do it in a reliable way. We, as a region, then want to apply for the certification as a sustainable uh, travel destination. And we think that this will be very promising because, because it's a process-oriented certification that we aim at. And then together with the hotels and the organizations, we want to develop uh, objectives together. We are, we are one of the biggest regions in Schleswig-Holstein. 
So um, you expect quite a lot from the big players. You, um, we, we heard um, about the guidelines. Switzerland is interested in the guidelines, uh, travel destinations as well. What about your case? Are people interested in maybe some uh, want to uh, do everything so as to be sustainable? Well, I was asked to be uh, one of the panelists. So um, people are aware of the fact that we um, do sustainability. A lot of things are um, being done at the in the region of the North uh, Sea, but in the Baltic Sea as well. So um, I do hope for a competitive advantage indeed. And we won't market it as sustainability, but we will have another marketing campaign for this. The guests will definitely see uh, what our uh, goals are. And quality is something you can communicate. And uh, I suppose that this will have a positive impact for you. This is exactly the way it should be. Mrs. Fall, what about the perspectives? We've heard it in the keynote speech and the presentation at the beginning. Are there any considerations about new copies, other copies? You, sh you Do you want to print uh, new guidelines? You have to provide the funds for this. What are the possibilities for the future, for the future of the guidelines as well? Because maybe it's also, uh, today is also a good day for the guidelines to make them more uh, popular. Yes, definitely. I can't tell you what we'll do next, but there are two aspects that I would like to point out once again. Mr. Timmer mentioned it already. And he said what they do in Brandenburg. We, as a federal organization, it's not really important to us whether we mention the term sustainability five times or not. It's important that sustainability is implemented and the destinations are a central, a vital player because they are in touch with the various regions and in direct contact with the players there, which uh, taken together can create more sustainability in the regions because one organic hotel is great, of course, but this doesn't mean that the entire region becomes sustainable and this is not an entire um, region providing sustainability in terms of tourism. No, this involves several things, a natural reserve, for instance, to make sure that there's preservation, uh, conservation of nature, etc. And all this needs to be accessible for papal mobility is um, of major importance for us. Not everybody needs to take his uh, um, their own cars to go um, to the various places. So destination management organizations are really a vital player for us. And how they do it in detail doesn't really matter to us. The important thing is that they start doing these things. And it was mentioned already by Mrs. Kenner, uh, we need to focus on the aspect of cooperation. I think nobody loses out if he or she talks about other people with other people uh, what they do because um, the situation really depends on the region so you don't need to be afraid that uh, customers will only go to the competitors if you've got a different approach. I think it is just important to observe what others do and uh, then ask yourself what could I do, what could I provide in terms of services and this would also reduce barriers. You said to talk to other people. Now I would like to talk to the audience once again. To conclude, I've got another question for you. You've already uh, mastered the voting system. Let's do it once again. I've got the following question. What about sustainable tourism in 2020? So in the near future, what will the development be like? What will sustainable tourism look like in 2020? Uh, Mr. Timmer just said, ask me in five years' time again. So the question to you, what is your assessment? Sustainable tourism will be the norm. If this is your opinion, please press 1. Second um, answer, sustainable tourism is a niche or other topics are more important or rather will be more important in 2020. So um, sustainability will not be that important any longer. So please, I would like to ask you to vote now and press either 1, 2 or 3. And then we will see... Let's see the result at the end of the discussion. I'm very curious already. I'm looking forward to the tension, the music. Okay, there we go. 41.3%.
of you say sustainable tourism is the norm? Far ahead, no, not really, but by 1.3% um, only. It should be taken for granted. Then number two was sustainable tourism is a niche. What do you say, just to conclude, because we are running out of time, unfortunately. I'm surprised. I would have expected a higher percentage for number one. This is what I would have expected, because I think this will be a must in tourism. And uh, it should be reflected everywhere in the tourism sector. Three years' time only. This is the, the near future. Yes, but a lot of things can happen. You managed what you've managed within one year's time. But yeah, well, I'm not sure about it, whether this will be the situation in 2020. But I, I think I know where we will be in 2020. Well, sustainability will definitely be important, and we will have made uh, progress. And I hope that people will immediately think of sustainability when thinking of our region. Mr. Timmer, your opinion? Yes, I have expected this. I hope that uh, at the next uh, ITB, sustainability will not be just be in one hall, but will be found everywhere on the exhibition grounds. And maybe there will be only one hall in the future without sustainability. Thank you. And I think at the ITB here, there are a lot of people who take a, a lot of prospects, uh, brochures with them home in a lot of bags. And they, I think this is something we can start at. Thank you very much to all the panelists. Thank you very much for the attention. And please feel free to uh, make the guidelines more popular. Thank you very much.